Hey y'all, it's Timothy, and I don't know what my hair is doing, but I think it's pretty. <laughs> I love vibing. Anyway, um, I'm here to talk to you about, I don't know, it's just surreal knowing how your life can change at any moment and your whole personality could change. I guess I'm making this video because, I don't know, my whole ideologies over life have just changed so much, but at the same time kind of stayed to the core values. Like, I always believed that people should be nice to each other, you should be kind to anyone you can. Um, be giving, be generous, um, and do what makes you feel good. That's always been my life motive, but I guess, I don't know, it's kind of amusing just seeing myself go from like a little tomboy that hated skirts and hated dresses, cause, or I thought I hated skirts and dresses. Because of course when you're a kid and then your mother goes, oh hey, do you want to wear this Echo Rockwear skirt that is no bigger than a belt to school with no leggings or tights whatsoever, and it's fucking 60 degrees in the fucking morning and it's cold as shit would you like to do that young scrawny ass child and you say no and they make you do it anyway and then you go to school freeze your legs off people make fun of you for looking ashy and then some girls even slut shame you which was weird because it was second grade N oh and that's oh fuck them anyway oh sorry i had a flashback and then, of course, when you're young, you're going to think, I hate skirts, I'm not wearing skirts again, I don't like skirts, and I hate, like, you know, you just decide that you hate it. And I didn't like, how do I put this? It's not that I didn't like femininity. At first, my mother thought I did, which inherently made me think I did. So all because I said I would like to not wear a skirt to school, she decided, oh, she means all skirts. When in reality, it was just, no, I just don't like not being able to go on play structures on the playground and having to sit perfectly still with my legs closed together. I like to be out and about. Like, if she gave me longer dresses or prettier stuff that was more modest or that I could do active shit in, then that's what I'd wear, but she didn't. So for a long time growing up, she never bought me anything feminine. And I also kind of resented it because people treated me differently because I was not feminine which in turn made me hate femininity if it's like what so I have to look perfect and pretty and fucking peachy all the fucking time just for respect no way in hell that's fucked up and I don't like it and I also just decided back then when I was a uh, middle school like hey if I'm like the creepy kid that like carves faces into fruit with my fingernails and re watches fucking anime and manga and likes vampire stories and has acne. I had a lot more acne like all over my face and forehead. People called me speed bumps. It was fucking ridiculous. And I couldn't really afford to look all traditionally goth or alternative. I don't know what to define myself back then other than I loved the color black and I wore it all the time. But since we were also not rich and or my mom kept spending expensive shit on my sister and not me because she was like "Ooh, yay femininity fuck you second daughter then well all you can really do is just wear the black jeans black boots and then the black hoodie from nike and then just fucking go along with your life that way i just oh and my hair was fucked up because my mom literally just decided oh well she's not feminine so why bother getting her the fancy braids or whatever to look cute who she gotta look cute for she has no fans uh. I'm sorry, I'm projecting so much off the bat. Anyway. <laughs> and I just basically didn't, you know, I loathe femininity, but I just decided back then, you know what? I want to see who the real genuine people are. The type of people that, even if I don't look super cute or fly, like, and I look a little odd or off-putting. And I was missing a tooth back then. This tooth took forever to grow in. I think I might have a third I could have sworn this got pulled out twice and then it grew back a third time, but I could also just... My mom claims I'm imagining it, but... Anyway. I hated femininity for a long time, mainly because I was resentful of it. And, of course, if it was modern day where it's like, Oh, hey, Tamiya, we found earrings for you that, with your artistic ass, do not cause you severe pain. And, ooh, look, sparkly things. Do you like sparkly things? Do you like lip gloss? Hey, do you like... Um, loose pretty clothing, and you can, like, you know, finding a balance that worked for me. She just gave up entirely. So I just decided, okay, I'm gonna hang out with the people who would treat me well no matter what, and will tr I can treat well back. And that was always the odd kids, like the unusual kids, the weird ones, the ones who didn't have any friends. And at some point, I was just friends with all of the people who, um, how do I say this politically correct? 
what's the name? Oh, the foreign exchange students, because they didn't know anyone, and everyone else was a little bit racist to them, because they didn't speak the fucking language or whatever. And then my history teacher in the sixth and seventh grade was like, hey, it's Mia. I noticed you like those, that anime stuff and those mangas. This is when she's a Japanese foreign exchange student. Be friends with her. Here's Isabel. She's from the Philippines. Here's Ming Ming. He's from China, and he likes fighting. You all can hang out and shit. And here's Den. He's gone. He's been here forever, but he doesn't speak, so befriend him, too. And then it's like, okay, and now I just had a cool little group of people who, even though they probably thought this girl with the fuzzy ass, fucked up, uneven ass, French braids, where one's going back this way, one's going back this way, I don't fucking know, they still went, you know what, she is cool, we don't fully understand her, but she likes to sit with us, and we don't talk much, but we share food, and we vibe, and that was good enough. I hope everyone's doing well, I wish we kept contact, but, you know, sad things, I hope they're doing well. I feel bad for not staying in contact, but you know. And then eventually high school came and that's when my glow up happened. Or at least by glow up I mean um, I started getting braids done. Like really nice long wavy braids, very nice elegant style. My skin was getting better because I basically had so much free time on my hands from, you know, not having friends and shit that I just thought, okay, I'm gonna study how to make myself look better. What gets my skin naturally clear because, you know, people are all shitty about girls who wear makeup. Or I'm gonna do massages to try and get my boobs to finally come in. And these fuckers did come in and I have back pains now. But it worked. And I did all the, you know, healthy eating, drinking tons of water shit, and it paid off, because the next thing you know, everyone was like, holy shit, you're cute. Do you know how cute you are? Oh my god. And then suddenly I learned, oh shit, the world treats pretty people better. And I thought, that's really fucked up. Because how many of these people would actually be friends with me if I did not look the way I was? Like, if my hair was still as fucked up as it was back then, and my skin, and if I wore the same shit every day, because I was poor, would they still talk to me? And basically, I just went through that, like... Eventually, I just thought, okay. So, I made sure I only befriended people who I could truly link with if they could handle me at my worst. And I made sure I still hold true to that, because I also knew pretty privilege comes with a lot. Like, if you're attractive, then you can get away with pretty much fucking murder. But I decided, I'm not gonna use that privilege for bad. I'm not gonna fuck someone's life up over it. I'm going to, like, help out kids. Like, hey, that local depressed guy or that kind of nerdy kid that no one's talking to, I'm gonna talk to them. And then people are gonna be like, why is that pretty bitch talking to the nerdy guy? She's either weird as fuck and we're gonna exclude her, which is good. Because if you hate me for who I associate myself with, get the fuck out. Or, it'd be like, hey, this guy seems pretty cool if she's talking to him. Hey, what's up, Zachary? What's up? What's poppin'? And then they'd build off of that. And I still did that, like, before COVID hit. That's actually something that happened. I got all dressed up because some friends over in Berkeley were like, hey, we're protesting against some cops trying to, like, take over our spot at Chuck Herrick Park. Can you, like, come here and then, like, help sit in with us? I came late, sadly, but then eventually afterwards we vibed. And then I guess tons of cops and or college kids would look at us and be like, why the fuck is she sitting next to all these people? Or I guess some people even thought, oh, this girl, it went from like, oh, look, that's the homeless spot, ew, to, oh, those just must be a bunch of edgy high school and or college kids because why else would that girl be there? And then people would be more willing to approach whatever because they'd be like, oh, okay, maybe they're not hostile, scary, and gonna stab me or, like, try to sell drugs to me. They're just gonna be like, oh, hey, obviously, since that girl's sitting there, must not be, they must be nice people. Otherwise, why would a girl like her sit there unless she was fucking nuts? Am I fucking nuts? Kinda. But I have reasons. <laughs> And even then I thought, I don't want to get mixed up in bad crowds. Like, you know, how do I put this? You can kind of tell when someone's going to be a bad influence because the first week, or even the first fucking day of freshman year of high school, people would be like, oh, hey, you seem cute. I like your style. Do you want to go smoke weed at the, like, oh yeah. They'd be like, hey, you're cute. You have nice eyes. Do you want to go smoke weed at the basketball courts, like, during fifth period? And I'd be like, no, no, thank you. And then they'd stare at me like a freak or something and walk off or whatever or claim I was stuck up, whatever. And 
I just said, nope, I don't want to fuck up my life that fast. Because you've seen those movies where it's like that Megan Good movie where all of a sudden she's a video vixen and she goes from this cute little sweet girl to like um, on drugs and BBLs and shit. So, you know, you got to make what feels right for you. I just decided, to put it nicely, and then how do I put this? Over time, eventually I also realized certain, you know, I had benefits that other people didn't have due to pity privilege. It's a thing that happens. Like how I realized that I was friends with this girl in high school named Chazia. She was fucking crazy. And I do quite literally mean it. She looked me in the eyes and said that she basically demanded that her mom buy her weed. Otherwise, she will get it from strangers on the street. And that she also threatened to kill her own mother. She was fucking insane. She's a sweet girl, though. She's a very nice baker. I think she works with animals now. So I think I just hope her circumstances got better. But... You know, she had an intense anger problem, and sadly, because of years of abuse and being forced to silence myself, I have patience of steel, or used to, now I'm gonna pop off. Because back then, it was like, oh, okay, I'm very used to just being silenced and being forced to deal with bullshit situations and not have a care in the world, so I'm used to it. So whenever someone was passive-aggressive towards her, like, she'd usually bring me along, just because she knew she would be the one to pop off, and I knew I'd be the one to do the whole light skin privilege oh ha. like you know someone could a situation that happened was that this woman um chazia was trying to go to the main office at our high school during like junior senior year and be like oh hey i'm here to get that permit by the way because she wanted to bring her like um anxiety dog to school and then the woman was so rudely like oh so you're the woman with the dog in a very shady, shitty way. And I felt that instantly. And I thought, this is gonna go fucking terribly. She should not have said that. And then, of course, they were very passive-aggressive towards Chazia. And I tried to be the voice of reason. And by voice of reason, I mean the pacifist. As in, I can tell bullshit's gonna happen. Girl, you can talk to me about this bullshit afterwards. But for now, let's be as polite as possible. Let me do the talking and I'll take care of this shit. And then afterwards, we can say how much of a fucking stank-ass bitch that bitch was. Okay? Did it work out as planned? No. Chazia popped the fuck off, um, lots of tears were had, lots of bullshit, and then, you know. And the sad thing is, I could tell that they were being a certain way to her because, to put it nicely, I won't say light skin- okay, light skin- we were both the same skin tone. She was probably even lighter than me, actually. But she was like, you know, thicker, bodied, plus-sized. And she was a little more alt-looking. She had, like, piercings on her ears and, like, colorful hair and shit. And she uh, wasn't fully in her dress code. So they probably thought, oh, we can talk to you however. And then with me, it would be like, oh, well, this is that little skinny girl with the, like, nice hair and the nice eyes and the British accent. Oh, she's so cute. And, oh, like, they basically treated me better than her because of that. And I think that's really fucked up. That is something that lots of people do. And let me tell you, I've been on the side where people have t treated me like shit because they did not like the way I looked. And I still experience that, ugly or pretty. On a bad day, people will still be like, ew, what the fuck are you doing here? And on a good day, even when I look all glammed up to the tins, they'll be like, what the fuck is she doing? What's up with her? Is she stuck up or something? Bougie, ew. And let me just say, I will forever want to beat the ass of people who are so judgmental that it's gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna treat you like shit just because I don't like the way you're looking right now. Like, I don't get it. What do people gain from that? What do people gain from that? <laughs> mm. I need to cool the fuck off. Either way. I also had a friend named Sadie, and pretty privilege is another one of those things because... Sadie was white. She was, when she first came to the school, sure she was plus size, but you know, she had giant, giant tits. And she was very pale, very pretty, long uh, blonde hair, bright blue eyes, cute little smile. Like, so even though she was plus size, she was still very feminine. And when she joined the special ed class I was in back then, uh, which was majority male, all the men liked me because, well, one, tomboy attitude, two, feminine look equals boy simp for me, I guess. And so when she first came, I thought, oh, no, is this going to be competition? And is it going to 
be weird. I just said, no, this is not some fuckery. I'm going to befriend her. And I did. And then over time, guess what? People realized that she had anger issues or this or that. Or temper. Or they just basically... How do I put this? Over time, her look changed. And her attitude changed for the worse. And then suddenly, everyone treated her like shit. And it was really terrible. Because... Even, how do I put this, I'm not going to say there weren't other factors, she had temper issues, anger issues, much more, but it's much deeper. How do I even say this? Sadie was a beautiful girl, but then once she decided, oh, I'm going to, like, listen to Nine Inch Ales and, like, talk about, like, my self-harming and this and that and a bunch of terrible shit that happened in her life, people suddenly used that against her. Which didn't help because I also used to be very quiet about my life back then because I thought if I say anything about myself, people are going to find a way to use it against me in the worst ways possible. So if I'm as quiet as possible and never share a detail about my life and let people perceive me as this angelic girl, then I can just continue living with total ease. Even though it was technically conforming something I'm not even... <sighs> something I hate, but it happened. And they treated her like shit. Total shit. They used to steal from her, call her hoe. Just so much terrible things happened to her. Even plus size shit. Because basically me and her, she used to be my size. Life happens. People gain weight. It's okay. But my teacher, uh, Courtney Gamora, she's a cunt and she works at my old high school. She basically was trying to dress code Sadie. Like, Sadie, that skirt is way too short on you. Why are you wearing it? Like... And because Sadie was wearing a mini skirt and it kept hiking up a little bit past like mid thigh to a little higher. And because Sadie was plus sized, everyone was acting disgusted by it or whatever. But then Sadie simply made a very good point. She said, To me, is wearing the same thing. Her skirt is even shorter. And that's true. And the only reason I got away with wearing mine was because my legs were super thinny, skinny, and super long or whatever. And like the skirt was actually so much shorter. And I find that ironic. I like short skirts now mainly because I'm like hey I have nice legs one I have nice legs two I can choose when I want to wear it and three I can wear tights so that my legs are fucking warm mother anyway and then the teacher tried to be like oh well that's because she's wearing tights those tights were translucent and that skirt was not fingertip level or not fully fingertip level honey mm. but they were just being uh, kind of fat shaming because of that and they also fat shamed Chazia and whatever but she was hard and then I guess over time life got mm. camera stop moving please camera stop moving challenge <laughs> over time life got difficult for many many reasons long story short um, I broke up with this nigga for trying to cheat on me and he decided to be not only manipulative but then try to spread nudes of me and paint some sort of narrative that I was harassing him and bullying him when in reality it was no I was telling you that we should stop talking because if you're going to spread rumors about me sexually and much more I don't need to be in your life at this point we could try and that I was questioning being friends and if your response to I don't know if I could be your friend anymore at this point, just give me some time, is, okay, I'm gonna share your nudes to all your male friends, then, you're, yeah, eliminate. And then, of course, next thing you know, the whole narrative about me was blown ass backwards. And he spread so many rumors about me, some not even true, he tried to claim I ate his ass, which is not true. He didn't have any. And also, I was not into that back then. Anyway. <laughs> And then next thing you know, I was the one being targeted because I spent so many years trying to be the perfect girl. Like, you know, the one they see in all the movies where it's like, oh, hey, I'm the beautiful feminine girl. I wear no makeup, just a tad though. But I'm so innocent and natural. I'm so natural. I'm a natural beauty. And you do that thing. And then it's like, oh, I can eat whatever and never gain. What like, you know, the whole trope of effortlessly perfect natural girl i don't know how to make it clear other than if you've seen the movie gone girl and you've heard her speech 
about how she waxed her pussy and made it seem like she loved cold pizza and beer when in reality she fucking hated it, but did it for male attention or validation. Then that's how it was. But I will say, was I trying? No. I was just me and people liked it. But then I quickly realized they had a fantasy of me in their head where it's just, oh, she's an angel and can do no wrong and literally just because they thought, oh, this girl doesn't like makeup, but she's still cute. This girl eats a lot, but she's still skinny. This girl's this way, that way. She must be the dream girl, and we should all love her and idolize her and a fuck ton of shit. And I just thought, God damn, some of these people would fall so easily into a cult. I swear to God, I like so fucking easily. It's creepy and also kind of disturbing. If I can do nothing, and someone will idolize me. In fact, I still kind of have that happen with several people to this day. I try not to hold it against them, and maybe that's also why... I, I don't know. I'll just say I've gone... I guess I'll transition into this. It made me go from... I'm going to keep everything about my life private be so that I can do no harm to... Wait, so if I say anything about my life whatsoever, these people will hate me? Even if it's not true, they'll just go, oh, hey, she did this, so she's a whore, she's a slut, la la la, even if it's not real. Then why bother? I went through such a mental snap that still fucked with me to this day, that it made me want to kill myself every single fucking day for several years straight. It was hell. I wanted to do every single thing in the book. All of those homicidal thoughts that I had growing up were just amplified. Like, I want to throw myself off the roof of fucking Skyline High School, and I want everyone to see my bones smash on the fucking ground and me splatter everywhere like a fucking brilliant Jason Pollock painting, or Jackson Pollock, or whatever the fuck. I want to stab myself in the wrist in front of the teacher and just drag the knife upwards like that scene in American Horror Story so that when she asks me, are you sure you're not feeling well enough to go to class or are you just making that up? That I could just show her, no, I'm really not feeling fucking well enough and I would just stab my wrist and be down on the floor and die. Sadly, did I do that? No. Well, not sadly. <laughs> I'm fly as shit. So, eventually over time my mind snapped and I just realized... You hate these people. My family didn't react well to hearing about the whole scenario and they did nothing to change it and they themselves are manipulative. The teacher found a way to victim blame me and also simultaneously tried to claim I was making myself out to be a victim. Everyone that I had ever trusted or helped out or gained trust with in the years of high school gave up on me. And... I almost took my life. Several times. I got IBS, sleeping problems, and eating disorder a lot because of them. Did that hurt? Of course. Did it stop me? No. I just eventually went, fuck it. I'm gonna do whatever I fucking want. And I did. I did absolutely whatever the fuck I wanted, because I cared about no one else but myself. I will say this fun tidbit about me. <laughs> Sorry. I've always cared about myself. I am one of those types of people you see in the movies where you'll stare at yourself in the mirror and give yourself pep talks, except the pep talks never stopped. You just keep talking to yourself when you're alone at all times, and you just make sure no one else is around to hear it. If you're ever wondering why I'm so good at making these videos, that's because I'm very, very used to talking about myself and talking to myself, and I'm very comfortable with myself because no one else matters and I love myself. And if that sounds cocky and narcissistic, that sounds like a you problem. How is it my problem that I am able to look at myself and go, on my worst day, you're fucking beautiful, amazing, and you deserve the fucking best? And on my best day, I'll congratulate myself. See, maybe you should just get higher self-esteem. Exactly. Uh, but I love myself. I always have. And then, even when I started to, like, hate living, I never stopped hating. I mean, I never hated myself. I just thought, 
I love myself. Did my family love me back then? No. Friends? No. Teachers? No. Anyone who made any sort of sexual romantic gesture towards me? No. They didn't. I just realized, fuck it, I love myself and that's all that fucking matters. So I did what's best for myself. I just started dressing how I wanted. Dressing more laid back, tomboyish, just casual. I started dressing more slutty, or their version of slutty, which isn't even slutty, it's just, oh hey, this girl has the audacity to wear a mini skirt with tights and flats, and lip gloss, and eyeliner. Wow, what a whore! Or this or that. Like, if you saw what I was wearing back then, you'd probably think, that just looks like something someone would wear to a business interview or a church, but that's what they considered a slutty. I just wore whatever I want and did whatever I want because I knew at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. People still talk shit. People treat me like shit and assume what they want, and that's fine with me. And I felt invigorated. I even just... To be perfectly honest, I started skipping school. I just decided, life is hell. These classes aren't teaching me shit, and I can't even focus in the ones that can because of my bullies and the people tormenting me. So I'm just gonna skip. I stopped going. Then all of a sudden, with me gone, those same people then missed me. The ex that tried to in my life would reach out to me saying, hey, I miss you, I'm sorry about what happened, why aren't you coming in school? Why don't you speak to me? Why aren't you replying to my texts? Teachers did the same. It got insane. I started telling people to fuck themselves to their face. You don't know satisfaction until you can tell a grown woman to her face, go fuck yourself, you fucking cunt. Until you can just know, I can choose my reality. I'm not going to stay in an environment where I feel like I am hated. Or anything. Because then guess what? If I killed myself, what would they say? They'd be like, who gives a fuck about that bitch? They'd be like, oh, it's so sad that she passed away, but it was nothing we could do. When there absolutely was, they just didn't. Then, then they deflect blame for the rest of their fucking life. And then my family would cry about me being gone, despite literally glaring at me whenever I was around them and talking shit openly while I was there. So, yeah, I had no other option. And I'm happy for myself. Because I got to meet so many people and learn so much about myself. I got involved in a lot of stuff, like, you know, the whole SWJ movement of just like, oh, wow, it turns out that... People want to change genders, they can do that, because fuck it. If I'm not going to cry or be sad as fuck, if anyone, regardless of any gender, wears anything, I got to meet lots of interesting people, date lots of interesting people, and then experience, like, love, heartbreak, pain, pleasure, so much that I couldn't have done if I just stayed in that fucking special ed classroom and let people call me a whore nonstop over shit that never even happened. And I just really thank myself and feel grateful that I had the strength to get through it, since not everyone has that type of strength to just get through the situations and circumstances I did. There's so much more that I, goes into it, but you know. And eventually I just had a diogenes mindset. Because at this point, my family was also getting poor. Like, even more poor. At some point, our wealth kind of changed. Sometimes it would be like, oh, hey, Tamia's doing well for herself. She is given, like, a $20 a week allowance. Wow, that's so much. She could go to the movies and get some food? Wow, she must be rich. And then I could dress myself well or go shopping and do this or that. And then suddenly that came to a halt because, you know, next thing you know, my family was struggling. And then next thing you know, they struggled terribly. Terribly, terribly, terribly. But when, I guess, how do I put this? It made me also, when I struggled, I just basically went, everyone's ignoring me again, but it's whatever. I found people who would help, and some who took advantage, but most who helped. And what else? What else to say? <sighs> And I got involved with, like, you know, more homeless people or whatever, since I just kind of realized, hey, 
there's been times where I'm like, hell, even when I was poor and all I was getting was 20 bucks a week, but it's not like I could have gone anywhere. It's like, hey, even just giving someone a few dollars could change their whole day around over their life. And then it's like, hey, I could hang out with these people, talk to them, learn about their experiences and compare and contrast. And I met tons of like-minded individuals who had autism or who had abusive families or um, sled shaming or who are closeted or whatever and just building up from that. And it felt... How do I even describe the way it felt? Refreshing. It felt refreshing to just find some people where it's like, they didn't care about my image. If I showed up to them all dressed up, they'd accept me as who I am. If I showed up looking bummy as fuck, they'd be like, it's alright, sis, we are all so down bad. Come talk to us. You can even have some of our food, but if you want to give us food, that's cool too. And it just felt like a sort of specific love. Or at least, like, you know, to them it was just a normal fucking Tuesday or Friday. But for me, it meant a lot because I didn't have that type of connection growing up. And it felt good. It's hard to explain, but it felt good. Continuing on. Um, eventually, I did become kind of like Diogenes. Like, you know, the dude who told Alexander the Great, hey, you're standing in my fucking light, get the fuck out of my life. And the type of guy that said the best place to spit in a rich man's face. I mean, the only place to spit in a rich man's home is in his face. I became one of those because even though I was poor, I was still beautiful. Even when my hair was fucked up, there would still be men who were like, wow, this girl's unique. She's exotic looking. I like her eyes, I like her lips. Ooh, I've never had her before. Let's try this out. And then it was like going from dating shithead men to like men who pretended not to be shitheads but would buy me whatever I wanted. And you just feel kind of like a resentment when you found out how they lived, like eating Thanksgiving dinners together. Or like the type of assholes who can buy huge plates of food, not even eat a third of it and then throw it out and then do the same thing several times a day. Just so much wealth in a disgusting level. And then life continued getting hard after that. And it just astounded me just how some people can have opportunities that I couldn't, but was so wasteful, I guess. Because, you know, hell, I value $20. I could do a lot with fucking 20 and some of these people were throwing away $100 bills with fucking no care in the world. And I was never a materialistic person, by the way. Like... You know, I like sparkly things, but guess what? If someone ever came up to me at any point in life, like, hey, are your diamonds real? I'd be like, oh, no, these, this was, like, fucking $10 at CVS. These were, like, $1 on, like, those packages of hundreds of little rhinestone earrings. So they're basically, like, two cents each. I'm not wealthy. I'm just very put together. I studied a lot of fashion. No got into it as a career, though. And I'd never lie and be like, oh, hey, yeah, I get expensive facials and do this.